In this video, we are going to prove an inequality taken from part number 2002. For any integer n is great, that is greater than 1, 1 over 2ne is less than 1 over e minus 1 minus 1 over n all to the power n. And that expression is again smaller than 1 over ne. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. So here we have an inequality with fractions, some of them it contains e at the denominator. So they are kind of like terms. So maybe for the first step, I'm going to rewrite the inequality so that our lower bound, our target lower bound, becomes 1 over 2ne minus 1 over e, while the upper bound becomes 1 over ne minus 1 over e. And then the expression in the middle becomes minus of 1 minus 1 over n all to the power n only. Now, we've gathered the like terms, and it seems the subtraction is quite complicated, so why not we multiply the entire inequality by e, so that our lower bound becomes this, 1 over 2n minus 1, and then the upper bound is just 1 over n minus 1. And the thing is at the middle will be minus e times 1 minus 1 over n all to the power n. And at last, I'm going to remove the minus sign in the middle so that our lower bound becomes minus 1 times our original upper bound, which is over here minus 1 times this, that goes to the lower bound instead. And so after multiplying, we have 1 minus 1 over n at the lower bound, while for the upper bound, we have 1 minus 1 over 2n. So now our inequality kind of um, becomes a little more good looking because all three entries of this inequality are things that are in terms of one minus reciprocal of integers. And to further proceed, I'm going to take log on all three uh, entries so that log of 1 minus 1 over n less than log e plus log of 1 minus 1 over n all to the power n and that is less than log of 1 minus 1 over 2n. The reason that I chose to take log is that because for the expression in the middle it's kind of too complicated because it's all to the power n but if I take log then for the next step, I can rewrite the things inside the mid at the middle to be 1 plus n times log of 1 minus 1 over n. And the second reason that I chose to take log is because I have e as a multiplier next to the power of 1 minus 1 over n. So when I take natural log, log e becomes 1 and the whole thing becomes even more uh, simple, even simpler. So now our inequality only includes log terms and things are kind of behaving in a linear way. So it will be easier to handle at this stage. Now at this point, I'm going to introduce the power series of things of this form. Say for example log of 1 minus x power series. Now notice that for this if I consider its derivative it will be minus 1 over 1 minus x and we can write a power series series when x 
has modulus or absolute value to be less than 1, then I can say is equal to minus 1 multiplied by 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed up to infinity. It's just it comes from the sum to infinity for geometric series. Now because this power series is obtained after taking derivative, so I need to kind of integrate it to go back to derive the power series of natural log of 1 minus x. And that is minus 1 times x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 plus x to the power 4 over 4 and so on. So we integrate. So the expression at the top right should be the power series of natural log of 1 minus x. And this applies to our situation because indeed for integers n that is greater than 1, these parts are between minus 1 and 1. In particular, it's between 0 and 1. So our power series applies here. So now from this, we can take a look at natural log of 1 minus 1 over n. Now using the power series that we've derived above, I can say is equal to minus 1 times 1 over n plus 1 over 2n squared plus 1 over 3n cubed plus 1 over 4n to the 4 and so on. So I've kind of expanded the brackets and multiply minus 1 to each of the terms so that's how it's going to look like for natural log of 1 minus 1 over n. And similarly, we can do things on natural log of 1 minus 2n. Or maybe let's do the one in the middle first. Because that will be easier to compare. So we can and make use of the things that I've derived above and say it's just 1 plus n times the things we have got just now. And so simplifying, we see that it's 1 minus 1 minus 1 over 2n minus 1 over 3n squared minus 1 over 4n cubed and so it happens that the first two terms cancel out. So we get 1 minus 1 over 2n minus 1 over 3n squared minus 1 over 4n cubed minus 1 over 5n to the 4 and so on. So now we have two power series and let's see the third one, the last one. Also, natural log of 1 minus 1 over 2n, we can simply replace the entries here by 2n. So it's minus 1 over 2n minus 1 over 2 times 2n all squared minus 1 over 3 times 2n all cubed and so on, which needs some kind of arithmetic. And so we have minus 1 over 2n minus 1 over 8n squared minus 1 over 24n cubed minus 1 over uh, 64n to the power 4 and so on. Now we have three power series and they are all in decreasing powers starting from 1 over n and then 1 over n squared 1 over n cubed 1 over n to the power 4 and we can compare their coefficients. So as you can see, for the 
top power, power series, we have 1 over minus 1, minus 1 of half, minus 1 third, minus 1 fourth. The general term is minus 1 over, say, uh, m, let's say m, mth term. So that's the first power series. Well, for the second power series, we have the nth term to be minus 1 over m plus 1. As you can see, minus 1 over 2, minus 1 over 3, minus 1 over 4, minus 1 over 5, and so it's minus 1 over m plus 1. And we know when we compare term by term, the coefficient for the first power series is smaller than the second one. And let's see the bottom one, the bottom power series. The general term for the nth term is minus 1 over, or I should say, is actually m times 2n to the power m. Because for the first term, it's just 1 times 2n. And the second term, we have 2 times 2n squared, and then 3 times 3n cubed, 4 times 2n to the power 4. And so that's the nth term. Of course, we are taking away the n. So this is the coefficient. And this is even smaller than the second power series, I mean the general term. So by that, by comparing coefficients of like terms in the free power series, we've managed to establish our inequality. And notice that is that we actually have strict inequality, and because for the, all the steps we have taken, they are all equivalent to uh, by working backwards. So we've established our original inequality.